So there's our filled bag. I'm going to pull the clamps off and lift up the uh, tying area. See how we clamp this on the 2x4? Pull that off. Now we still need to pull off the, uh, pull out this whole framework. So we'll go through that real quick because there's a few shortcuts. Okay, now there's still load, there's still weight on this framework because of this, these lifting loops, okay, that are strapped into here are still holding up the desire of the bag to sort of sag and settle in. So in order to get this apart easily, what we need to do is, and this is the reason we use two sets of pipes, is that we're going to slide this one out, okay. So we take 2x4 here, all right, pry this over a little bit, and then lift it up. Now we got a gap here, all right. Some cases we have to use the tractor bucket to lift these off if this is really heavy, and that's the reason for getting the dimensions all about right, is that there's, there's a little bit of stretch and lift to this bag, okay. We pull this up and off of this frame member, and then slide that out. Then we can just drop this pipe down in, okay. Now the load's off of this side. By bringing this out, out like this, we take the load off of this side. So the reason for using the extra set of pipes is for the ease of unloading the framework when it's still under pressure. Take this off and we're going to move the camera so you can kind of see the, the spacing right here before we do anything. So now you can see this is our spacing between the saw horses is approximately here. You can see that our bag is kind of settled in and swelled out, filled up most of the gap of the next one. Okay, The spacing here you can adjust a little bit. You should do a few bags to see exactly how your bags behave in terms of settling in. Um, and what you're going to see is that by spacing them correctly, I can leave this sawhorse in place, bring that sawhorse over and space it out correctly for the next bag. Okay. So I'm going to pull, pull out my framework here, drop those on the ground, okay. Then what I'm going to do is take this out and set it in here. This is the best part of the whole process, right here, okay. I'm going to do the same thing on the back, right there. Now it's kind of pinched, that other sawhorse is kind of pinched in between those two bags, but not too bad. Okay, so what I do is get over here like this, and pop up, and slide that sawhorse, slide that sawhorse right over the bag like that. Come out here, roughly align my lines right there with this sawhorse, put it on the ground, same thing back here. So I can get my sawhorse in about the right spot. Flip it over. And I'll set this sawhorse down about where my lines are so I'm pretty close. And then we'll get our feet set up on the bottom and be ready to do the next bag. And that sawhorse stays in place. This sawhorse gets positioned and we fill the next bag right in here and just keep repeating the process. We're also going to um, show this black fabric underneath as a scour mat and we'll take a closer look at that. That's to hold the sand in underneath the bags and um, there'll be more details for that later on. We're going to fix the corner of that bag over there to make sure it's, uh, that the scour mat comes up and behind the bag, not underneath it. So there we are. You can see we got our corner of our bag now up completely on the scour mat. The scour mat is 8 ounce. Um, it's 8 ounce non-woven um, fabric available from erosion control supply places. 